Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Before we get started, just in case you missed last week's announcement, The Drawing Lesson, my new book, it is out, it is in stores. It is a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw. But let's go ahead and set that aside and get into today's lesson. I'm going to be doing a video on how to draw the human ear. Now I've done one before uh, that shows you step by step how to draw the human ear, but that was on a face in profile where you get the really nice sort of perfect view of the ear. Very often we're not drawing the face that way though. We're drawing someone looking straight at us and the ear is sort of seen from uh, the side uh, or you're getting kind of a weird front view of the ear. That's the view that I want to focus on today. And as I did last time, I'm going to try to break it down into the most simple number of lines possible, specifically four lines that we're going to be focusing on. I'm going to do it in time lapse, but I'm going to come back and explain each line after I've drawn it. Alright, so this line is for the contour of the ear. I just realized I forgot to point out the squares here. People like to know the size that I'm working at. That's why I put these squares in place. Two inches on all sides. That works out to five centimeters. Uh, so uh, that way you know the size I'm working at. Also it may help you in terms of the uh, placement of these lines. But this is uh, hopefully the most simple of all the different uh, lines that compose the drawing. Uh, just uh, starting here and kind of going in a, you know, it starts as a circle then it straightens out. You may pay attention if you're trying to use this sort of grid method of reproducing this. You could pay attention to that triangle there. Comes down and uh, doesn't quite reach uh, the other side of the square square here. Uh, but this one definitely laying right on that line. Now uh, I think I'll, what I'll do is just add just a little line here. If the person had their uh, head shaven uh, or is just completely bald, this is where the line of the scalp would come when you're you know, seeing the person from the front uh, view. Now later on I may just add hair here and obscure that. But let's move on to drawing the next line. Consider this line number one. Line number two is going to come right along here. Shouldn't be too hard for you to put into place. Well, I had said that that first line was the simplest. Clearly, I was lying to you. This is the simplest of the lines. It sort of looks like a letter J upside down, and it is delineating the uh, the sort of upper rim of the ear. Notice how it's quite thin here from this point of view. We're getting this angled view, and we're seeing this sort of ridge. This upper ridge of the ear gets much wider there, uh, narrower over here, and eventually this is going to sort of hook into another line, as will this. And and uh, I guess what I'll do right now is move on to drawing what I called in the earlier vi uh, video the thumbs down mitten. Now if that sounds strange to you, that's probably because you never watched that video or else you forgot it. Um, but it is an attempt to describe the shape uh, that takes place right here, uh, right around the dead center uh, of these two boxes. Let me. I'll go ahead and draw the shape and then I'll come back and uh, explain the whole thumbs down mitten stuff. Alright, so here you see this shape that I have somewhat awkwardly tried to describe as the thumbs down mitten. Now in the uh, uh, original video where we saw the face in profile, it really did look a little more like a, you know, sort of a thumbs down uh, mitten type shape. Here from this point of view, the thumb area gets much, much narrower. And I should point out that, uh, you know, of course different people have different shaped ears. Uh, and so this whole area, pretty much every one of these lines, uh, very varies quite a lot from one person to the next. I've tried to choose this, you know, sort of typical, fairly typical looking ear. Now, you may notice this dotted line here. Very unusual for me to put a dotted line. Of course there's no dotted line unless you take a marker and draw it in your ear. But what I'm trying to uh, convey here is that this is sort of a single shape, but what happens, and we're going to get into this more later, is that uh, there is no linear aspect at all right here. It, it's, uh, it, just from this point of view, the, of course there's no lines in real life, uh, but th these areas here are sort of more sharply defined. This area right here is defined only by shading later on, and that's why I put in the dotted line and I, I sort of erased away right here. This will become clearer when we get uh, on to the next uh, part of the, you know, or the shading aspect of the video. Let's go ahead and move on to one more line, and I guess this would be line number four out of my four line method for drawing the ear. It's going to start up here, and it's going to come right across and actually uh, go in front 
of this line, which is different uh, from what we saw in the earlier video when we draw uh, when we draw the ear on a face in profile. Let me go ahead and put that line where it needs to be. So this is one of the biggest differences uh, between the face and profile and the you know front view of the face in terms of what happens to the ear. Uh, when you are viewing the ear from the front, this sort of interior section actually bulges out and um, intercepts. Is that the right word? Inter sounds like I'm talking about football. Interception. This line uh, goes out in front. Uh, of the uh, a line that was for the edge, uh, uh, the upper edge of the ear, and uh, basically this no longer is viewed down here. It sort of disappears back there, and this becomes the new uh, line that uh, fades off rather dramatically in most cases, right around here. And uh, yeah, if you were drawing a very cartoony uh, character, uh, especially from a distance where you don't want to get into the details of the ears. Uh, this uh, four-line structure, one, uh, what did I do, one, two, three, and four, uh, would serve you pretty well for drawing an anatomically accurate ear. Of course, I'm not going to stop there, and if I had to say that there are two more places that need a little bit of shading, if not line work, uh, I would say that they go right here. This, uh, I'm adding just a little bit of sort of diagonal shading here um, to point out how this edge down here, it sort of divides into two parts and, um, you know, depending on the lighting situation, different lighting situations will create different shadows, but in a sort of typical um, light from above, you know, sunlight coming from above type of a situation, you are going to get some uh, shading right here underneath that uh, thumbs down mitten area. And, uh, of course, later on there's going to be shading here, but I don't think that's so important to the, the structure that we're talking about. The one other area where I think uh, you will see some shadows occurring is right here. And I mentioned this, again, for sort of like structural purposes, that um, you can kind of imagine this whole thumbs down mitten area becomes a kind of a ridge if you follow along here. And that's uh, where it's going to... You know, you're going to get some shading here, but very little shading right here because the, the flesh of the ear is kind of um, coming forward there and preventing shadows from forming. I'm just going to go ahead and just quickly put in some shading here to, to maybe help accentuate that idea. And, you know, maybe at this point we just sort of segue straight into the shading part of the video because it uh, indeed does become crucial for making a uh, uh, very realistic looking ear. The shading, especially from this point of view, it, it kind of is all about the shading. Uh, though, as I said, if you're doing kind of cartoony drawing, you don't need to get so concerned with this part of it. But for those of you who do want to do a more accurate, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this line here because uh, now's the time to get rid of it before I start laboring on the uh, shading. So anyway, go away, guideline. <laughs> but we do thank you for having helped us get things where they need to be. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, just keeping my pencil low to the page, I'm just going to go ahead and put some shading in here, some sort of all-purpose shading to kind of fill in and define this area. Now, if you were to try to darken in, like I was saying, for like a cartoony version of the ear, uh, you could probably just go ahead and darken in this whole area. The thumbs down mitten, mitten region. And um, that basically takes care of that. Now, I noticed uh, a lot of darkness forming here when the ear is lit from above, as it so often is. Except when you put a flashlight under your chin and tell spooky stories. <laughs> this area uh, on a normal sunlit day will get quite uh, dark and especially in the upper area here. I wonder if I went into the shading in my uh, earlier video on the ear. I don't think I did. I don't think I talked about it quite so much. And I know a lot of people are wishing I wouldn't talk about it quite so much right now. Curly, will you please stop talking? Oh my goodness. Anyway, I'm, I'm continuing, even though these are two separate areas here, I'm kind of continuing and putting a, a fair amount of shading right up here in the... Uh, underneath that 
ridge. But hopefully you can still see that we got, you know, two different sections here. I haven't really talked about how this line comes down and hooks in behind this line. That also seems a little different from what we saw when we drew the ear from the uh, side view of the face, kind of in profile. Um, this area right here at the top of the uh, mitten area gets very dark. Very little light can get into that region. But remember where I had put the dotted line earlier? That was really uh, to prepare you for this part where we find that the the shadow of this interior section kind of spills out just because of the convoluted shape of the flesh in this area of the ear and it becomes I'm just doing little circular motions here you can shade this any way you like it's uh, you know use your own preferred method of shading but you can see how it uh, it's you know very defined here, really quite defined down here, but from this front view, and this is something I learned only through study of photographs, you know, as I prepared for this video, that uh, you know the shape of the flesh just causes this area to become less defined. Now, if you really want to go for extra credit, <laughs> what is this, an assignment? Uh, you may uh, darken in and, and leave just a little area here a little lighter. In fact, sometimes like a photographer's flash bulb or whatever will uh, re glint off that interior section. But I sh should stress again, there's huge variety in the shapes of people's ears. So I certainly do not mean to say all ears look like this. Um, let me go ahead and darken in here. I'm going to time lapse through shading, a lot of shading at the end of this, but I wanted to sort of just talk you through. Now, uh, uh, with a lighting situation with light coming from above, this ridge, this upper ridge of the ear, as it turns uh, inward, will uh, get some shading along right especially down here but even a little bit heading up along that line whereas this section that comes in front of it is not going to have much uh, shading again with a typical light from above lighting situation well, I guess we're coming down to the last bits of shading. This area here does sort of relate to this area over here that comes from that edge. Uh, they do not do not necessarily join completely. I feel like there's a bit more shading here. There's qu quite intense shading over here. Uh, and though they may be, uh, you know, a little bit connected to one another. The shading does not necessarily join perfectly. And we're getting closer to the end of uh, this part. I feel like for, you know, from some people's point of view, you may feel that I actually made it <laughs> too complicated. It doesn't need to be that complicated. But I thought for people who were really, you know, really wanted to go for it and try to get um, you know, maybe not photo real, but super, uh, you know, attentive to the to the structure and the details. I decided I would let's just take it, as take it to the limit, take it as far as I can, uh, and then yeah, of course there's going to be some shading down here. You know, speaking of how different ears have different shapes, this uh, the degree to which this is separate from the rest of the, the sort of jawline is can be radically different. I'm sure some of you've seen uh, it. It can come right down like that. Uh, some people have very uh, separated. Uh, you can look in the mirror and, and look at your own ear, see uh, to what degree the earlobe, the lobular region, <laughs> is joined or separate. And I think that brings us to the end of things. I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, refine the shading, probably pull out my trusty black Prismacolor. There's no probably about it. I just pulled out my trusty black Prismacolor, and uh, you're going to see me add some hair. This is, you know, the video is not really about the hair. I suppose I can quickly uh, 
talk about how for most people the the hair is going to come in right here over the um, edge of the top of the ear and then depending on the uh, sideburns it can keep going down and down and down but I'm probably going to have it just sort of trail off as I saw in photographs. Well let's go ahead and uh, finish off the shading and I'll be back with a few final words. All right, well, there's my video on how to draw the human ear. Did an awful lot of shading there in time-lapse, but uh, bear in mind, it's not necessary to add this level of shading, especially if you're drawing a cartoony-looking character. Those initial four lines uh, that I showed you at the beginning of the video, those are really almost all that you need. But for now, let me go ahead and thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, like the Brody's Ghost Collected Edition, my manga series, more than 500 pages long. The Drawing Lesson, just out this past Tuesday. Really appreciate anyone who picks that up. And of course, The Realism Challenge, my book on hyper-realism, and Mastering Manga, and Mastering Manga 2, my books on how to draw in the manga style. I am always super, super appreciative of anyone, anyone at all, who supports me by getting any of those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. And I'll be back with another one real soon.